My question is this. I have a mortgage that's about 330000 and I bought a second property in Airbnb overseas, and I have a little bit of money now. And so, you know, I understand about the translation a little bit, not too deep into it, but I'm in a position where should I buy another property? Should I invest in, you know, in some kind of business to, you know, get some passive income or should I take that little bit of money I have now, you know, and do some payoffs on my mortgage now. And so that's kind of like, what is my position? And I just kind of wanted to see, is it best to pay off the mortgage? I was kind of doing a calculation and it seems that I could pay it off in 14 years. I have a 3% interest right now. Mm-hmm. And I kind of want to see what you guys think is the best route here. Libna, Libna, what a beautiful, beautiful question. So here's what we're going to be talking about, Libna. When you have money available to invest into getting more property, you want to be able to do that. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay. So if you have a goal to build your portfolio, how many doors or how many units do you want or you be striving for? And then, you know, you shoot towards that. All right. This is what you want to do. Okay. So, but there's other monies that people ignore that are kind of sitting in the bank. We call it lazy money. Okay. So a lot of real estate investors that I know have money sitting on the side in a reserve account, just in case something goes wrong and they need to fix it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Thus, I have that also. Yes, I do. You have that also. Okay. So what you're asking is what's called an opportunity cost question. Okay. So if I spend my money one way, I can't also spend it another way. So if I take all my money and I use it to pay down the debt, I can't use that same money and grow my wealth. Does that make sense? That's exactly the position that I'm looking at. Yes, I I do. There there you go. So what if we didn't have to choose? What if we could do both? It's not an either or, it's a both and. That's exactly what I'm doing or thinking of doing. Taking a little bit of this. Okay. Putting in here, taking a little bit of that, putting in that. But I just kind of, you know, this interest cancellation is great when you, you know, can pay off something and save payments. So that's why I'm drawn to the stage. All right. So now the other thing we want to talk about is I meet people who have been in this business a long time and they're looking at getting out. I mean, they're, you know, they're kind of older. They're not looking at growing their portfolio, but it sounds like you're in the stage where you're still growing. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'll ask another question. Are you trying to pay off a loan or put yourself in a position where you can cash out refi on your current properties? Okay. I already refied Mm -hmm. last year Right. on the current property. I made quite a good income last year. So I took that income, Mm -hmm. not taking out a loan, Mm -hmm. second loan, and I made my current home into a triplex. Mm. So, uh, you know, I still live in it, Mm -hmm. you know, but I have, because I have little kids, I still live in it. Mm -hmm. So, but this year I'm I'm looking into making my own, you know, decent, good size income. Mm -hmm. I have a lazy account as well. Mm -hmm. Right. I bought another property at the end of last year in Dominican Republic, Mm -hmm. which I'm going to set to finish uh, half that loan, half that payments cheaper. So about a hundred thousand, but I'm set to finish half of that this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So Libna, it sounds like I should be taking lessons from you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that is wonderful. That is a fantastic way of doing this. So let's take a look at it this way. We're going to keep it simple. All right. And what we want to do is make money and save money. How do we increase profitability? So when we take a look at how much money we're making, we also have to take a look at all of our expenses, correct? Correct, yes. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we take a look at all the traditional expenses that you're already looking at and ask this one question, how much is it going to cost me to manage my debt? And let's see how we can increase our profitability by reducing the amount of interest that we pay on our loans, while at the same time, taking our funds and investing money into opening more opportunities to grow our wealth. Okay? 
Okay. So I've got a $330,000 mortgage on the screen right now. Can you give me an interest rate that we can work with? 2.99. Okay. So here's what we've got. We've got a $330,000 loan. All right. At 2.99. The principal and the interest payment on that is $1,389.51. All right. And so we've got rents coming in. That's more than taking care of that. So we're cash flowing folks. So we make sure that the amount of rent that we have coming in more than pay for the principal and interest and the taxes and insurance on the property. And what you have left is profit. Okay. So we're going to take a look at that, but some of that money is going into a fund so that we can always be able to make repairs on the property. And some of that money is going towards investing in other properties. So here's what we're taking a look at. A $330,000 loan over a 30-year period. The bank wants $170,223.60 in interest on that loan for a total repayment of $500,000. Okay, folks. All 3% loans are 51% loans. This is 2.99, so it's still there. 51.583% of what you borrow, the bank wants in interest. So what we're taking a look at is how can we pay less interest, all right? So here's the other thing, folks. Keep this in mind. I'm going to give you, while she's getting set up here, four things that you need to keep in mind, all right? Number one. When you are making money, making your income, look at how much you're spending on lifestyle. You determine what your lifestyle is so that you can create memories for you and your family. You don't want to be in a position where you're working just to pay the bills. That's no fun. All right. So determine what your lifestyle budget is going to be. Number two, Work with a financial professional to figure out how much money you should be putting into savings. All right. Um, getting ready for retirement, maybe putting away money for, you know, uh, college educations, those sorts of things. Make sure that you're putting away the right amount of money towards your future. That's number two. Number three, make sure you're making the minimum payments on your debt. Got to do that because if you don't, they're going to come by and get stuff. Take away whatever it is that you're paying you know, <laughs> that you're paying these payments on. And then here's the last thing. You have to make sure that you're paying all the rest of the bills. Electricity, you got to buy food uh, to pay for your telephone, uh, insurances, things like that. Make sure all your regular bills are paid for. Once you take care of those four things, guess what? There's some money that's left over. This is the money that we're going to use to help save you money in interest. Do you know out of that money that's left over, do you know I run into people who have 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars sitting in the bank making one tenth of one percent because they've got the other four things covered? They have way too much money sitting in the bank. Lazy money. But Don has some valuable information that can contribute to the quality of a person's life, and it only costs you a few dollars. He's it's his book. Why not get that? Is I'm going to go through the pill method myself with some of my investment properties. So I'm going to link up with uh, uh, Don and then I'm going to sit down with him, show him my investment portfolio and see how I can eliminate interest.